All right, thank you, Bree. I'm really glad to be here with you today uh, to talk about uh, the role of camera traps for wildlife conservation and where open science hardware might come into this. So before I got into open source communities and open source hardware and all of these things, uh, the original hat that I used to wear back in the day uh, was the hat of a ecologist uh, who does conservation work. Um, I uh, went to many places around the world to do field work. Uh, I was in South Africa for a while, which is where this picture was taken with some of my friends doing field work there. I also did field work in places like Costa Rica or Papua New Guinea or Malaysia. Uh, it was really fun be, being out there, right, in the wild with all of those wild animals and learning about the ecosystem of this planet. Um, now, one of the biggest projects that I worked on back in the day uh, was after the Deepwater Horizon oil spill in 2010. So this was the largest uh, marine oil spill in history, and it happened in the Gulf of Mexico, um, ironically, right around Earth Day in 2010. And uh, what happened was that uh, this oil spill really impacted the marine wildlife there, including the fisheries that were so important for the economy um, along the Gulf Coast. And I was part of a group of marine biologists who went to the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico in submersibles such as the Elvin uh, that you see here, uh, where we studied how corals were affected by the oil spill. And I am starting with this because it was during this time that I gained a appreciation for uh, how our use of technology has led to a lot of harm uh, to our ecosystems, but also at the same time, how we can use technology to better understand the biodiversity that we live with on this planet, right? And I'm really excited that in the past several years, there are organizations like Well Labs where they're really thinking about how we can better use technology for ecological research and conservation. So um, one of the most fundamental issues uh, of today is of course climate change and biodiversity is a really important part of that, right? In addition to reducing our carbon emissions, we're moving to low energy, right? In the latest IPCC report, they talked about how restoring our degraded ecosystems and conserving the Earth's habitats have an important role to play when it comes to absorbing and storing carbon uh, dioxide. So uh, when we think about the biodiversity in the world and how we quantify and measure that biodiversity, a really fundamental question is how do we estimate wildlife populations? How do we actually count the animals and know how many of them there are out there? So I would like you to keep this fundamental question in mind as I talk about the rest of um, the things I wanna talk about today. So when we wanna estimate wildlife populations, a very important tool that ecologists use are uh, motion sensing camera traps, right? So these are really rugged cameras that you can uh, uh, put up, you know, outside in the woods or in the wild, and they have motion sensors that are triggered by animals, and the cameras would take pictures of the animals as they move in front of the camera, right? So these pictures are from Mammal Web, which is a citizen science project that I started in 2015, where people work together to capture uh, the diversity of wildlife in their local communities. And these cameras are also able to take videos, which I think are really, really cool because you can learn about, you know, not only the diversity, but also the behavior of different kinds of animals that might show up in front of these camera traps. Uh, but there are several challenges when it comes to the first one is that when you run a camera trapping survey, you would often get hundreds of thousands, if not millions of wildlife photos. And traditionally, you have to manually go through every one of these photos and identify the animals that will show up. And this takes a lot of work. And I've done this before, so believe me, this is a very tedious process. Uh, fortunately, um, when it comes to technology, people are actually uh, training machine learning algorithms to automatically uh, recognize and classify the animals that will show up in these camera trap pictures. 
Um, another really cool work is done by Sarah Beery. So she would actually use artificial intelligence to synthesize fake camera trap images. And they will actually use these fake images to train the machine learning algorithms. And then those algorithms can be used to automatically identify animals in, these, in real pictures. And I think that's really, really exciting. So a lot of work is being done in this space. But the other challenge is that um, when it comes to camera traps, the question is how do we actually go from having these camera trap pictures to having a quantified measure of how many animals there are, right? Again, it goes back to how do you actually estimate wildlife populations. So right now, what people do is that they will set up a camera trap grid um, in, the, in the place, you know, the area they want to do the survey in. And they will set up a lot of these camera traps in you know, ideally in the grid formation where at least some sort of randomized placement. And once they get the camera trap pictures, ideally uh, you want to derive two pieces of additional information. One is the bearing and the other one is the distance of the animal from the camera trap. Now, once you have all of the data, including the distance and bearing of every single animal, you can feed them into mathematical models, such as using methods like distance sampling or the random encounter model. Uh, there are statistical models where after you feed the data into it, it can actually give you that quantified estimate of, um, of population densities, such as, you know, uh, there are four deers per every square kilometers in this or something like that, right? So this is the key piece of information that we want to get. Uh, I think the really difficult parts still are these two steps, right? The first thing is that you often need to set up tens if not hundreds of these camera traps uh, for your survey. But then the other really difficult part is that right now you have to manually measure the distance and angle of the animal from the camera. You often have to stick poles in the ground um, and use tape measures to measure all of these things. It takes a lot of work and it's really difficult for people to do. And you have to be able to measure this for every single one of the possibly millions of photos that you would get from a camera trap. This is not practical to do in a lot of cases. And uh, the good news is that there might be some technologies that can help us with this, right? To measure the bearing distance of the end. And these are depth sensors. So these are sensors that can actually give you an entire depth map. Uh, uh, that's what they call it, of every single item on, on the, on, in the picture. And they can tell you the distance of that camera. Um, Andy was really generous for starting a forum thread on the GOSH forum, where he compiled uh, some of the technologies for depth sensing states, right? And uh, they include technologies such as um, time of flight sensors, uh, projected structured light, or LIDAR. And I'm happy to talk about these technologies more, but in the interest of time, I like to talk about one of them that I think is pretty promising which is uh, the stereo camera. And this technology has been around for a long time, right? It's basically just like any other camera, except it's got uh, two camera sensors instead of just one. And they're set apart at a set distance inside these cameras, as you can see in these pictures. And what happens is that you would get two side-by-side -side pictures of the same thing. And there are slight differences between them so that when you combine them, you get something like this, right? And using the mathematical principle of parallax, you can actually use the difference between these two pictures to calculate the depth map that you need so that when you get pictures of wildlife, um, in this case, a piece of simulated wildlife, uh, you can actually use the difference between those two pictures to calculate that depth map. And I think there's a lot of potential here because when you compare a stereo camera to an existing camera trap, it's actually not a huge step up in terms of the technology, right? It's basically just like uh, uh, having a camera trap except it's got two cameras in one. So an obvious question is, okay, what if we just you know, go ahead and build a piece of open source camera trap that's got two camera sensors in it? But this is where a, a big piece of the difficulty because there are other important technologies. These cameras are really rugged, they're weatherproof, and you know, they can even 
it withstands you know, animals brushing up against these cameras, right? So that's really difficult to achieve. And this is super difficult. So camera traps are, have, are very, very low power. Once you set up these camera traps in the wild, they can be out there for several months at a time taking motion triggered pictures. The other thing is that they have very, very fast response times. So going from uh, you know, an animal coming in within the view of the camera and uh, taking a picture, all of this can happen in less than half a second. And this is also really hard to achieve. And of course, these cameras are capable of taking night vision pictures. So existing camera traps can do all of these things. And I don't think we want to reinvent this wheel from scratch, at least not yet, because that would take a lot of additional work, right? Another thing is that it's really easy to look at all of the technology that's out there right now and really uh, get into the problem of, um, I think it's called feature creep. Right, where you think of a lot of really cool things you want to add, uh, uh, but uh, that actually might detract from uh, a more focused approach. And I think that discipline is really important here. So I want to talk about something that really inspired me, which is Freak Labs. So they're a group that creates a lot of open source hardware for conservation. And they published a paper recently, uh, and they called uh, the technology that they created the Boombox. And the way the boombox works is that they take a camera trap that you can buy right now that's off the shelf, but they attach a custom add-on to it. So this custom add-on is basically a PCB that they designed and fabricated with a few extra batteries. And then what happens is that when the camera trap is triggered, this add-on will be triggered simultaneously to produce certain sounds through a set of external speakers they attach. So when you set up, it up, it will look like this, right? So whenever the camera trap is set to take a photo or a video, it would also make a sound. And the reason they do this is they want to see how different kinds of wildlife would react to different kinds of sounds. So I'm going to show you a brief example of a video they took with the boom box uh, that makes a sound uh, that makes a, 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 a animal react. <laughs> So in this case, you know, what you see is that the camera trap triggers a sound and the wildebeest in this case is scared by that sound in months away. So they use this to study animal behavior. Now, the reason I talk about the boom box is because I'm like, you know, what if we do something similar, right? But with stereo cameras instead. So there are some stereo camera modules that you can also buy. And I'm like, okay, so why don't we start with the boombox? But instead of speakers, what if we replace that part with stereo cameras so that we minimize reinventing the wheels? And, and whenever the camera trap is triggered, we also take the stereo image along with that. So we're essentially creating a stereo camera add-on for camera traps. And I've been thinking about a plan for how to do this. And I, I think help with this. For example, when it comes to thinking about the components that we need, we need to think about the processing power that's needed to take a picture like that and save it within half a second of the camera trap being triggered. Is it Arduino enough? Is an ESP32 enough? Is that it? Because it also has to be really low power, right? The other thing is that what kind of sensor modules are out there? Uh, what kind of spatial resolution can we achieve with this kind of stereo camera systems? Is it enough to measure how far an animal is away from the camera and what's its angle? And how do we keep the timing right so that everything is synchronized, right? And I think I also really need help for the hardware integration that comes with this so that we can at least make maybe five or 10 of these modules attached to camera traps that we can field test. And when it comes to field testing, we want to do it in a real place with real uh, animals. So where can we do that? And I would love to get your feedback on where we can actually do something like this. And of course, how do we get support for financing uh, uh, the, the, the construction of these modules and also in terms of uh, the time that people can put into it. So what I can do is that because uh, I, I, I speak the language of the open source hardware community, but I also have a ecology background. So I know the kind of data that's needed to be fed into the mathematical models to produce the estimates 
of the wildlife populations. So I, I would really love to pull something like this together but I need your help, right? Again, like I said, in terms of um, thinking through the hardware that's needed, designing it and fabricating it, and whether and figuring out whether stereo cameras are needed because of the idea of this. And also, of course, your help in terms of finding a place to field test this stuff. So I would love to get your feedback on all of this and to just you know get your critique on whether this is just a completely infeasible idea. Well, maybe if it's a good idea. But anyway. That's what I have for you today, and I hope to uh, chat to you more. And I would just really love to thank Andy and Laura for the discussions we've had so far. Uh, in this kind of thank you.